Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Dan with Just Another Flipper. Just wanted to make a quick video today um, to give you a little bit of background about myself um, and my very small amount of history as a very part-time flipper. Uh, I started out uh, in this little journey of mine uh, roughly two years and a couple months ago. Uh, I actually started watching YouTube videos um, about guys and girls that did this, um, not only for a living, but part-time as a supplemental income. Now, I work a very full-time job. I work 50 hours a week, and I don't have a ton of time to put into this. So I wanted to start out very small and kind of just look for things and do it more of a, as a like a hobby than anything else. So when I started doing it, I decided, well, I'm going to try to see if I can invest a very small amount of my own money into a couple of items or a single item as it turned out to be and then kind of snowball it from there and then see where it takes me and 26 months later it's taken me into a 12 by 24 foot shed um, still again a very part-time side hustle if you will for me um, so how I also how it all got started again watching YouTube videos um, was watching guys that literally just went into thrift stores went to yard sales went to flea markets wherever they ended up going and purchasing things and listing them on eBay primarily uh, there are other selling sites uh, such as Poshmark Mercari Etsy and now a new thing that's come out in the last year or two called whatnot which is like an auction live auction service something that I have not uh, dipped a toe into yet, so to speak. Um, don't know if that's something I'm gonna do in the future, but well, it's always in the back of my mind anyway. Um, and that's how, what people would do. And I would watch people that would go into thrift stores and point out items that they would be buying and saying, okay, it's, it's I'm paying this much for it and I'm flipping it on eBay for this much, or these are what the comps. And when people say comps, um, again, anybody who's watching this is probably gonna know all the lingo, but if you're not familiar with it, when somebody talks about a comp, they're talking about a sold comparison on eBay, typically is where they're looking as eBay. Now, a lot of people are under the impression, and I see this all the time in listings, that, oh, it sells for this amount of money on eBay. What they are usually looking at is active listings that are not sold. They might be something that somebody posted up there and they're asking this amount of money for it. That's not a comp. That is an active listing. A comp is a comparison of a sold item. So when you're searching on eBay, you have to make sure that you're searching sold completed items to get an accurate portrayal of what the value, quote unquote, is of something. So I got really intrigued by these videos. And one thing, item that stood out in my mind that somebody talked about was the old school from the probably late 80s 90s era the old um under the counter uh, appliances so things like can openers and they made tvs and and stereo equipment that you could hang under the cabinets uh, for space saving purposes and the one that this individual pointed out was a black and decker space saver can opener and it's just a simple can opener that you attach under a cabinet and I'm like, okay, what's so exciting about that? Well, apparently there's a market for that out there. And they said that if you ever find one of these, pick it up, you can resell it for good money. So that always stuck in my head. So after watching videos for probably several weeks, I decided, well, I haven't been to a Goodwill in a long time. And we have a Goodwill across town. And I decided to go in there and walk around and see what they might have on the shelves. Well, being very new at this, uh, I didn't really know what was good and what wasn't good. So I, I wandered through the store and I made my way to the household goods and appliances. Sure enough, I walk down the aisle and I see sitting on the shelf in its original box, a Black & Decker Space Saver under the counter can opener. Hmm, interesting, I said, I'll take a look at it. I take the box off the shelf. I open it up. It's still got all the plastic on it. The instruction manual is still in the original plastic. You can tell this thing has never been used. Somebody got it as a gift, never used it, or maybe they just bought it for themselves and realized they couldn't use it. But regardless, it probably sat in a garage or an attic for 20 years and they decided, let's just give it to Goodwill. So it had a $6 price tag on it. So I grabbed it and I purchased it. And I believe I purchased a couple other small things that day, but I don't, honestly don't remember what they were. So I bring it home. I start looking it up on eBay. Sold comps in the $80 to $100 range new in the box well mine was open box 
that is an item that is still new, but the box has been opened up. In this case, that is what this item was. So I listed it on eBay promptly, took pictures, put the description. Um, less than 48 hours later, it was the evening, two nights later, that the item sold on an offer for $90. I believe it was $90. And I remember showing my wife and she kind of smirked and said, oh my God, I can't believe somebody would pay $90 for that. And I said, honestly, neither can I, but there's a market for used items out there. And that's what got me hooked. Um, just to summarize how I got to this point today, that was the last $6 of my own money that I put into this little endeavor of mine. I took that $90. Um, within a week, I noticed an advertisement on Facebook Marketplace. A gentleman was selling 450 uh, DVDs. Uh, roughly a third to half of them were still sealed and they were in amazing condition. You could tell from the pictures. So I took a ride and I went and I bought them. He was actually asking $100 and I offered him 90 because that's what I had from my sale of my can opener. And I turned around and listed every single one of those DVDs individually. And I still have, oh, I would say close to 300 of them left. And I've probably made eight to ten times my money in profit on those selling those dvds a lot of the sealed ones that he had i'm looking at them as i'm going through them and i've never heard of this movie well that's usually a good thing when you're talking about media the less you've heard of it it's probably a little bit more valuable and a little bit more collectible because they didn't make as many of them because it wasn't as popular and a lot of them just didn't survive or they sat on the uh, record store shelves or the Walmart shelves or wherever they were selling them and then they ended up just recycling them or doing whatever with them. So um, that purchase turned into that and then it's just snowballed into marketplace purchases, garage sale purchases, flea markets, more thrift store purchases, um, purchases from friends, um, just all kinds of different things that have led to the inventory that I now have where I am approaching 3,800 unique listings on eBay. Um, I like to sell anything that I can sell and make a profit on. I don't, I am not niched down. Uh, a niche is basically one particular thing that you focus on. I don't do that. I love all kinds of different items. I especially love items that I'm familiar with from growing up as a kid, uh, up through my teen years, up through my adult years. Um, things such as media, all different kinds of medias, whether it's VHS tapes, DVDs, CDs, records, cassettes, 45s, LPs, 8-tracks, laser discs, all that kind of stuff. They all have trends. They all have times when they come back and become popular. And, and that's where you got to kind of jump in and grab that stuff if you can. So um, I love action figures, toys, video games, um, collectible type of items, um, crafting type of items, uh, rock and roll memorabilia, um, statues, figures, just looking around clothing. I, I don't do a lot of clothing, but I like to do more your, you know, your brand name, um, kind of like Harley Davidson type stuff, uh, sports teams, hats, uh, collectible hats. There's a ton of those out there. Um, trains. I love to do stuff with trains. I actually had a train layout when I was younger and I know a little bit about trains and, and some of the big items, but uh, I just, I just like to sell anything that I can, that I know I can sell and I can make good money on. I like to buy big. I like to buy volume of things and then break them down and do the work that other people aren't willing to do. And yes, that results in a lot of smaller item sales, anywhere from a couple bucks you know, to $10 is probably my bread and butter. But when you do 30 or 40 of those a week, and then you add in a lot of the 20 and 30 and 40, and even sometimes over $100 sales before you know it, you have a pretty good week on your hands. And that's what I like to do. I don't like to spend more than 15 to 20 hours a week in this hobby. And now that I'm doing videos, that's going to increase significantly. I'm going to try to make that a balance. So I'm not spending so much time doing videos and not putting the time into actually listing. I've been doing a lot of listing over the past couple of days and it's paying off. I've had pretty decent amount of sales this weekend. Again, a lot of low dollar items, but this is a side hustle for me. Um, I don't do anything with the money other than invest it into more things that I can sell. So uh, there's no pressure. If I have a bad sales week, it's not the end of the world. It's just less work for me. Um, I do find the more I list, the more I sell, the better I sell. Um, 
that's just, I think that everybody who does this realizes that, that you can't take time off from listing new items. You have to keep your store in the eye. Uh, they talk about the e eBay algorithm, that nobody knows what the eBay algorithm is. Everybody speculates. I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people speculate on how, what they can do to increase their sales. And you hear so many different rumors and stories. And I just feel that consistent listing will get you more sales. That's all I know. And it works for me. So... That's just a real quick background of the two plus years that I've been doing this. Um, it was an easy transition for me. I set myself up in a way, especially with this shed now, um, to, to maximize the efficiency of this operation. Things like buying a thermal label printer that allows me to never have to change the ink. It's an automatic printout on a um, sticky label that I can just peel and put on my packages. I have a couple of sources that give me boxes and packing paper, so I don't have to spend a ton of money on that. I do buy uh, bubble wrap from American Bubble Boy. Um, I do buy my boxes typically on Amazon, honestly, because they have the best prices. I buy bundles of 25 or 50 or sometimes 100, depending on what size it is and how often I use it. Um, and I've got myself set up in a way that allows me to, to come in and pick an item and again, if you watch my previous video with a little bit of a tour of my shed, how I'm set up, you can see that I'm pretty organized in here. I know where everything is. Um, occasionally, I do have to spend more than a few minutes looking for something. It's very rare now. And I can grab it, pack it, process it, ship it, and get it done. And I can process, you know, 15 to 20 orders in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Um, and I consider that efficiency. And I don't want to spend more time than I have to with things like that. I want to maximize my time. Now that I'm doing YouTube, I want to make more videos. I want to interact with people more. I want to be able to spend more time listing because I have a death pile. Here's another quote. If you're not a reseller, you might not be familiar with. Sounds a little morbid, but a death pile is basically referred to as your items that you have not listed. And I have probably still in my basement over if I continue to do things the way I'm doing now where I list a lot of things individually I probably have over a thousand items still to list on eBay uh, so I have plenty of death pile uh, to get me through this coming winter because I live in Maine and we don't have garage sales going on much longer maybe the month of October um, it's been slow this summer we had a lot of rain up here this summer so there weren't a ton of garage sales and um, they've been very hit or miss, either really good stuff or nothing at all. And it seems like it's about a 80-20 split right now. So um, that's how I do what I do. And I wanted to give this video, it turns out it's not going to be that quick, um, but I wanted to uh, just fill you in on how I like to resell and what my strategies are and a little bit of terminology if you're kind of new to it. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I would really appreciate it if you're watching this video and if you've made it this far, if you uh, subscribe to my channel, trying to build this and get it out there in the community a little bit more. I do feel like I have a lot to offer. Uh, I'm not brand new at this and I've been on eBay since 1999, mostly as a buyer, but also as a periodic seller as well. So thank you for watching. Give this video a like, comment down below. If you have questions or if you want to comment on something, go ahead. Um, I love to read those things. I will try to get back and comment on them. Um, again, I only have 11 subscribers at the start of this video. So if you are watching it, I really would appreciate a subscription. And uh, it will get the channel out there a little bit more. It'll move it up in the uh, search. And hopefully more people that enjoy watching this content will have access to it. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.